baby. <sighs> oh, yes. Oh. There, there. Oh, no, there. Oh. 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 oh, baby. Oh. You are oh. the greatest. Oh. This has got to oh. be the best night of my life. I need more, Larry. More. And something new. Here. Slip into these. God, Shamra, is there anything we haven't done? There's lots I haven't done, Laffer. That's why I'm leaving you. Leaving? Now? A night with you gives a woman plenty of time to think. All that New Age philosophy crap just isn't me. What I really love is money. You can't leave me here like this. You're right. So long, sucker. Hey, I don't smoke. Oh, baby, you are the lowest. This has got to be the worst night of my life. <sighs> well, at least things can't get any worse. <laughs> I should never say that. It's a good thing Shamor used those vice grips last night. I can just reach him from here. Attention, attention. My cobalt is in the penthouse. Me? Yes, you. The person who spent the night with Shamra. Leave now. You we think there may be a fire a somewhere. Little hair weave kit and find a needle inside. a dollar every time I've heard that. gonna do next I'm going to take a cruise Boat babes, my name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Welcome aboard the PMS Bouncy, Laffer. I'm Captain Thigh. Before this cruise is over, she'll be falling all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Here.
Here's your key card, Mr. Laffer. There's been a slight problem with your room. Eh, I kind of expected that. Oh, not to worry. I took the liberty of substituting our largest cabin. You'll have plenty of room. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's super. Thanks. Now, um, where would my room be? Oh, just check the map. You're in room zero. A few chairs there in the back. Oh, never mind. If you're not seated by now, just stand. I'm sure Captain Thigh will be pleased as punch to see such a good turnout this week. And as you all know, each week she runs a little competition for her male, or male-like, passengers, which she calls the Thigh's Man Trophy Contest. Isn't that cute? Of course, there's no actual trophy involved. No, what you win is better than hardware. One of you will spend next week cruising on the captain. I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> that is... She'll treat you to a one-week cruise in her cabin, where your every need will be met. Oh. By now, each of you has received your personal scorecard, listing a random set of events the computer assigned you. Now, don't you worry, okay? No one has to enter every event. There's just too many. Uh, just find the ones listed on your scorecard, enter, and win. The man with the highest total score wins. Are there any questions? Are there any answers? You may begin. Hey, um, I've got a question. Yes, you there, in the interesting clothes. Uh, what's this item listed here on my scorecard? Chastity? It's a joke, sweetheart. Say, what's wrong with you, anyway? You're not some sort of government infiltrator, are you? That's ridiculous. Oh, yes? I am going to keep my eye on you, sweetheart. It's not my fault you can't make a joke. Yeah? You'll find out when we're finally in charge. Then you'll be the one singing a chass titty tune. That's it. I'm leaving now. Everyone else is already gone. So they have. Very well dismissed. Hmm. He's a strange one. Your attention, please. Steve is the proud winner of the nude Scrabble competition. Uh, 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 excuse me, ma'am. Um, may I bother you for a moment? <laughs> This gun salt hair is rusting me f***ing leg socket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who the hell are you? My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Yeah, well, I'm Peggy. And did I mention this salt hair is rusting me f***? Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks. Well, you don't have to be so f***ing uppity. I can see why they call you Peggy. Peggy. Can you lame ass? It's because my f***ing mother named me Margaret, you stupid c sucker. So, um, how'd you lose your leg, Peg? A uh, freak f***ing accident, that's how. One day, I inadvertently combined KZ Jetty with deodorant spray, forming a powerful contact explosive. Sexual lubricant? Deodorant spray? And you lost your leg? Let's just say I wasn't spraying me f***ing armpits, okay, Ooh, okay. <laughs> no more details, please. No! Is it just me, or do you seem to swear a lot? Swear? Oh, hell no, mother f***er. I suffer from chlorets. Chlorets? <laughs> Don't you mean... Tourette's? No, ya dumb twit. I mean, I got a foul mouth. <laughs> uh, Miss Peggy, can you help me with these competitions? Help you? Hell no! It's guys like you that dribble all over the f***ing love master, and then guess who has to clean all that shit up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good old Peggy, that's who. Shit. I can't tell you how many times me pig leg's been stuck in that god drain. I'll see you around, Miss Peggy. It's been my f***ing pleasure, you p No alarm sounds. Hmm. Makes me wonder about all those times I didn't sneak into movie theaters. Ah, 
you snare a delicious kumquat from the tree. How you wish you had a taste icon so you could taste it. Hey, wait! With this new interface, you might. What are you doing? Oh, I'm the handsome sailor who entertains the many children on this cruise. But I haven't seen a single child anywhere. That's because this game is too dirty for kids. So, exactly what is it you do? Well, I make balloon animals. Say, do you want one? Hmm, not really. I'll consider that a yes. Here you go. Look, it's Hooty the Owl. But that doesn't look like that. Well, it does to me. Yeah, well, uh, y you can keep it, okay? You insert your key card into the slot with great anticipation. What will your special suite be like? Your attention, please. Mark has just finished with a record high score in the nude curling competition. You could, but then you couldn't flush it. And surely it smells badly enough in... Now that toilet will have plenty of water. What? Not without wiping. What are you going to use? Your leisure suit? Oh! Oh, that is rough! Excuse me, miss. Um, that's Ms. Victorian Principles. Nice to meet you. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Oh, I so love dual first names. One cruise I met Boutros Boutros Guy. Are you the ship's librarian? Yes, I am. Do you see something you'd like to check out? Oh. Oh, I'm sure you have something I could explore <laughs> in depth. All righty. What is your cabin number? Whoa, babe, slow down. Jeez, and women say I'm fast. Fast? Uh, well, sir, we check out books by cabin number here. Tickle your ass with a feather? <gasps> what did you say? I said particularly nasty weather. Oh, really? So, uh, you got any good books? Oh, many kinds. Unfortunately, you're a little late. All the really good ones are already gone. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Huh. 
How's your book? Oh, quite uplifting. I so enjoy books affirming sound moral principles. Don't you? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do, but, uh, don't you ever read anything spicier? Oh, no. Those books don't appeal to me. All that panting and groping, that raw animal passion, that, oh, well, it just encourages the wrong sort of thoughts. No, no, I only expose myself to great literature. I wish I was some great literature. Yeah, great literature. Yeah. But, um, what do you do for entertainment? Well, I start at one end of the bookcase and read my way through to the other. Unfortunately, I'm now on my third pass through most of them. Cruise ship life looks like an endless vacation. Don't you just love it? Sure, it's perfect. If perfect means knowing that every day you're going to have exactly the same food you had that day last week, it's perfect. But all the fun, the nightlife, the non-stop partying. Oh, well, not for us crew members. For us, it's more like never being able to leave the office. 945.3471.24198.33 Oh, what are you doing? What do you think? Whispering Dewey Decimal numbers to you. Turn you on, huh? Uh, hardly. I filed them all. Did I mention my name is Larry? Now would you like to have sex? You're disgusting. You'll never get anywhere with me, you pathetic loser. How about me whispering a few Dewey Decimal numbers in your ear, Victoria? As if I haven't heard that line before. Men, you're all alike. What about these? Oh, those? Those are already checked out. To me. That's a lot of reading for one cruise. Not for me. I'll finish those tonight. In bed. Would you like to know what I plan to do tonight, um, in bed? I'll vote sleep. Just a moment. Let me look that up for you. You never know when something should be more sticky. Your attention, please. The mandatory oh, no, lifeboat sorry, safety that drill for all out. passengers will be... Ah, oh, never mind. Whoa, sorry, dude. You gotta stop here. Why? What's wrong? You! You can't enter the pool like that. Like what? Like that! You know, dress. Why not, dude? Safety reasons, dude. For sure. Safety reasons? Wait. Purser's orders. That polyester fabric could ignite in this tropical sun. So, drop them. Well, I don't think I should enter naked. I mean, everyone would, um, stare, you know. Physical attributes? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, Dick, once I went into a restaurant that required a tie, and, well, because of my personal aversion to owning anything other than leisure wear, um, I never had a tie. So, I... Sure, I got courtesy loaners. Oh. This little dude right here is exactly what you need. Oh, great. Of course I couldn't get a normal swimsuit. Can I at least have a towel to cover it up? For sure! No problem, dude. Now, don't get it wet. It might shrink. <laughs> Cybersmith 2000. Oh, I got sunscreen in my eyes. Boy, oh, towel boy. I need a towel here, please, quick. <gasps> Oops. Oh, boy. Oh, thank you. Well, well, what have we here? <laughs> 
Is that your trunk, or are you just glad to see me? And what's your name, little Babar? Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. And you? Drew Barrymore. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a codpiece since I took Professor Lipkin's minor playwrights of the late Elizabethan period during my sophomore year at Barnard, and I've never seen one with such a cute African influence. You know, I'm quite interested in history, but I'm essentially ignorant of anything past the tertiary-level African tribes. Could you share a little of its immediate history with me? Perhaps its regional influences or its acquisition history? Oh. Well, the cabana boy gave it to me because I forgot my swimsuit. Oh. You don't have any clothing at all, do you, Drew? Of course not. I love nudism so much that just as soon as I board ship, I get rid of every single piece of pesky clothing. Good idea. And I force my cabin boy to lock up my suitcase someplace where I can't possibly find it so I can spend the entire week here by the pool naked. I eat, sleep, sun, and swim here, never leaving the comfort of the chaise. It may not be an ideal vacation for everyone, but for me, well, it's what I love most. Oh, this tropical sun is brutal. I hope you don't mind, Larry, but I need to spend a few minutes rubbing this sunscreen all over my naked body. Need help? No, but nice try. I really like the way it makes my skin glisten, you know? The way it brings out the soft little hairs on the back of my neck, my arms, my... Stop! I can't take it! Aww. I didn't realize I was being so hard on you. Excuse me, Larry. Here comes a waiter. This'll just take a second. Waiter! A waiter! Hey there, beautiful. What can I do for you? I want a gigantic erection. Looks like your uh, little buddy there's got you covered, huh? What? I said, bring me a gigantic erection. Well, okay, baby. I'm your man. Well, where is it? I'm working on it. Am I moving that computer? <laughs> Look, I want a mixed drink, a cocktail, you know, lime juice, 151 proof rum, vodka, triple sec, mayonnaise with a hollowed out frozen banana to suck through. You know, a gigantic erection. Okay, but uh, it'll take a while, you know. So, you recognize this as a con piece? Of course. It's been a few years, but I believe my college text defined it as a pouch at the crotch of the tight-fitting breeches worn by men in the 15th and 16th centuries. It's from the Middle English word cod pes. A cod, a bag, a scrotum, which came from the Old English word cod, meaning bag plus pes, meaning peace. Is that your understanding, Larry? Yeah. Thanks. Aren't you worried about overexposure? Oh, no, not anymore. Sure, once upon a time, I had to limit my exposure, especially on a tropical cruise like this, but ever since I discovered this SPF 300, I have no problems at all. Every few minutes, I carefully, slowly, thoroughly rub it over every single inch of my naked body. Aww. And, of course, my laptop computer here does offer some protection, although I do get a peculiar tan line. Oh. Larry, is my nudity making you uncomfortable? Is this hard for you? No, it's been like this ever since I got here. So, uh, did I ever tell you I know Al Lowe personally? Who? Oh, I remember him. He came through here last November. Unimpressive. Yeah, maybe. Not him, Larry. You. Drew, would you mind if I borrowed your book? Not at all. I think I'll have a drink myself. Oh, uh, waiter, I want the same thing the lady ordered. Nice suit. Uh, no, uh, please, bring me a gigantic erection. Oh, uh, that'll take a while for the bartender to fix. Wait right here. I've never heard of a gigantic erection. Oh, it's my favorite drink, Larry. Usually I suck it all down, then nibble for hours on its hard, frozen banana. Oh, lordy, lordy, help me, lordy. Uh, Drew, I'm gonna go now. Okay. Your attention, please. Jim has just won the Strip Twister Championship. Hiya, Vicky. Yes? Oh, it's you again.
Just a moment. Let me look that up for you. Nice going, Larry. That ought to stimulate her inner woman. No, we don't seem to have anything on that. Well, nice talking to you, Victorian. Perhaps I'll stop by later. Alrighty then. Good day. Excuse me, miss. Didn't you used to be the ship's librarian? I still am. So, uh, is that a library book in your pocket? Or are you just glad to see me? But, um, what do you do for, say, entertainment? Oh, I start at one end of the male passengers and work my way through to the other. Unfortunately, I'm now on my third pass through most of them. Didn't you used to wear glasses, Victorian? Yeah, but now they keep fogging up on me. But you know, Larry, without my glasses, you look pretty good. I look even better in the dark. My God, Vicky, I didn't know books like that were legal. Ah, oh, those? Ah, oh, those are nothing. You should see what's in my cabin. I promise not to refuse. That life aboard a cruise ship is like an endless vacation. Don't you just love it? Sure. It's perfect. If perfect means knowing that every day you're going to have exactly the same men you had every day last week. But all the fun, the nightlife, the non-stop partying. Oh, not for me. It's more like working in an office. Particularly nasty weather. Of course you may. And what's more, I'll help you. Larry, it's time to turn my literary research into action. I, um, well, yes, I, 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 oh! Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. Oh, Oh, Larry. Oh, 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 Larry. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. Oh, 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 Burp me like a Tupperware. Oh, now what am I gonna do, Vicky? Oh, what more is left to do? I mean my clothes. How can I get back to my room naked? Ah, oh, don't worry, Lair. I can loan you a jacket. Okay, there's my room. I'm gonna make it without a single soul seeing me naked. Your dad. Your attention, please. This ship has sails, but they're not made of silk. Rubies do not fill its hold. There is no gold nor spice. That is all. 
so you are. How about me whispering a few Dewey Decimal numbers in your ear, Vicky? As if I haven't heard that line before. <laughs> Men, you're all alike. You don't need a pickup line. Just ask me. You know, you are the greatest, baby. Ka chunk, ka chunk. Yeah, right. Nice line. <laughs> no, really, since you left, I've done nothing but read about sex. And now I'm the most sexually knowledgeable person on this ship. Oh, really? I'd uh, like to see you prove that. Yeah, I bet you would. No, I don't think I'll prove it with you. I know now. You just weren't that good. There must be some way to test your theory that you're the most sexually competent person aboard ship. Oh, really? How? So, uh, what do you say we see how you do on the old Love Master 2000? Oh, good idea. But it won't work. I'm an employee, and employees aren't allowed Fies Man Trophy scorecards. But, um, I have a card. You could use mine. Well, I don't know. No self-confidence, eh? You're on. Okay, Vicky. There you go. This will prove who's the real sex pert. Do you want to get out? I think I like Tell it. Or what you gonna do? Ooh. Do you want to get out? Or what you gonna do? See it top that. Oh, I, I couldn't. You win, I guess. Now, um, how about some private lessons? <laughs> Dream on. I'm heading for my cabin. A nice, stimulating book. But wait! I didn't even lose all my clothes yet! Oh. Your score, Larry Laffer, 1,000. Wow, a perfect score. Laffer, come by the office, okay? I get off at midnight. Please? Well, you didn't beat Vicky, but who cares? You got a record high score on the Love Master 2000. You're a gadget, please. Let's just see what this Larry guy's got. Laffer mm. has just won the second sexy portion of the competition with a record high perfect score of 1,000 points. Congratulations, Larry. What a man. Your score is two. Hello there, beautiful. What's a mermaid like you doing here in this Atlantis city? Get out! This is a private area. I've rented this war room for the entire cruise. And I certainly don't want anyone to see moi near anyone dressed like vous. Oh, French, huh? I so enjoy the French way. Uh, yeah, I bet you do. Still, I'm having no luck here. Maybe a few minutes of inane distraction with this imbecile will stop my creative juices flowing again. Je suis Jamie Lee, the famous hot couture fashion designer. Not Jamie Lee Coitus, former leggy supermodel? We, oui, I was, and still am quite leggy. <laughs> and who are you? Larry? <laughs> Larry Laffer? You've probably heard of me, too, huh? No. You look distraught. What are you working on? Distraught? I'm bugging! I was gonna use this friggin' cruise to show off my new spring line to the world fashion press. I even paid their way along with us. But now 
I just learned my arch rival, that bastard Calvin Crone, scooped me. He pirated my entire spring line, waited till we sailed, then showed it to the press as his spring line. He can't do that. Ha! Tell him that. But what in the hell am I supposed to do? My whole line will be laughed at. I gave it my all, and now it'll be called derivative. I gotta show something before we dock, but I'm beaten all out of inspiration. Oh, well, I wish there was something I could do to help you. You know, I used to have a lamp like that hanging over my computer desk. And your point is? Oh, uh, nothing, I guess. I am so lame. You've gone through a lot of paper. Uh, ain't it the truth? What am I gonna do? I gotta get an idea from somewhere. What's a nice girl like you doing in a dive like this? Hey, I'm earning a nice living, Larry. And what does this look like to Vu? A singles bomb? Hey, I bet you could help me with this competition. Where are you from? I am from Joyzy. So I suppose you spell your name C-U-R-T-I-S? No, why? <laughs> The collection Calvin Clone ripped off, um, what was it like? Oh, it was feminine and sexy, kicking, you know, the perfect look for the office and out on the town. It matches the way a woman lives today. I was so totally inspired. In other words, exactly like every other designer's line. But if I help you out, say, with an idea, you know, you would be grateful, right? Grateful, we. Gracious, doubtful. It would be so non-couture. What's your favorite fabric this season? Natural dyed and patterned cotton. Soft, flowing, kicky. How about blue? Felt. Get it? <laughs> Ugh, I should have guessed. So... Would there be any chance of finagling a ticket to this fashion show of yours? Oh, no. It's strictly for the industry press. We would never allow, in public, d'ordinaire. So, if there's gonna be a fashion show, there's gonna have to be models here, right? We. Oui. But what good will they do moi? They have nothing to wear. Say, that would be a show. I bet modeling is just about the best career ever. Ha! It is to laugh. It sucks, Larry. That's why I'm a designer and not a model. Dig? The solution to your problem is right before your eyes. All white, but not too bright. Lightweight, but durable. Artificial and wrinkle-free. Vu? What? Oh, not me. Polyester. The leisure suit. It works for me. It's a classic look. It stood the test. It's still the best. What? Oh, wait. Right. Although retro is in, and fashion has done crazier things. And really, when you come right down to it, ain't fashion just convincing people old ideas are new? Making people desire the crap they just threw away? Sacre blue, Larry! It just might work! And the best thing is, I'll make that asshole Calvin Clone look like Z-Fool. Say, uh-huh. Happening. Oh, 
But wait, it's impossible. We're in the middle of the ocean here. The press is already aboard, and I have no polyester fabric. Well, I could fax an order to chopper it aboard. No, there's no way. But I do have my best seamstresses here. No, they're just for last minute alterations. There's no way they could stitch up a whole new line overnight without fabric. Eh, maybe next year, if I even have a next year. Why do designers keep changing clothes every year? I mean, why not stick with what looks really good? Like leisure suits. Uh, think, Larry. If fashion changed slowly, people wouldn't need clothes as often. They'd stop spending money. Economies would die. Millions of sweatshops and uh, factories would go out of business. Unemployment would be rampant. So don't you see? The world really needs haute couture. Oh. You don't really have your clothes made in sweatshops, do you? Oh, of course not. Au contraire. No, honey, I carefully inspect every floor of every manufacturing facility in every country every day for non-politically correct conditions. Yeah, and I change the needles on all their sewing machines, too. What are you, naive? Hot Couture really provides a service to third world countries. We keep people inside, out of the sun. Sometimes it's even cooler inside. Well, usually not, but it could be. Oh. Jamie Lee, I've got a great idea. Vraiment? That means really? Let's hear it. It concerns you, and me, and no clothing. Oh, yeah, like that's ever gonna happen. Well, I'm off, Jamie Lee. Tell me something I didn't know. Your attention, please. Brian has just won the Strip Solitaire Championship. Nobody will ever miss a couple of these dice. You wonder where... Hey, look! The door doesn't quite latch. I can just walk right in. Okay, it's your ass. Sure, you can take the jumper wire, but why would you ever want to prevent a jackpot? You never know when you might find a beautiful babe in need of a roulette wheel that needs polishing. Oh. Attention dealers. Special seminar. Dealing from the bottom of the deck made easy. Saturday, 3 a.m., Ship's Lounge. Serving. 
We got spork, very best. You like, okay? Pork. Yeah, that sounds good. Jesus, Mary and Joseph in a tiny canoe. Are you deep? It's spork. I heard you the first time. I'll take one serving, please. You got it, boss. No complaint, Raider. Okie dokie. My God! What is that? Like I've been trying to tell ya, it's spork. Oh, the processed potted meat food product that tastes as fresh as home slaughtered. Just like Mom used to butcher. Very good, boss. Now you go. Hey, uh, what's with the accent? I did I. I knew I couldn't keep it up. I'm Chinese, you see. But me parents were Buddhist missionaries, so I grew up in Ireland. People stare when I speak normally like this. So I found it simpler just to sound like some bad Charlie Chan impersonator. Too much talk. More people need smoke. <laughs> you see? Dang, Wang. That spork is tasty. How about some more? Mmm, spork good, no? Dang, way. Now be sure not to exceed the maximum daily allowance. Those warnings are on the can for a reason, you know. Oh no! Not enough smoke! We must get more! No touchy! Since Wang's not looking, I may as well steal his knife. The heat lamp's turn-offs are bad hair days and men who take too long. Okay, but first you'd better let it cool. Mm hmm. Okay, now. Ow! In a masochistic, self-abusive sort of way, you rather enjoyed that. Tonight, a spectacular display of audio animatronics in the proud little seaman lounge. Don't miss your chance to see great moments with Mr. Clinton in the lounge nightly. Cybersmith 2000. This is my thought. Well, no. Good idea. Let's see what's in there. Hmm. What if I just connected, say, these two circuits together? Yeah, that shouldn't cause any problems, should it? <laughs> Attention, please. Following it. Mr. Mazzo, report to massage therapy immediately. Don't forget, the oh, 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 then a few hours later, join us on the boot deck for sunrise breakfast. Ow. Ow. And of course, at 10 a.m., we have brunch in the restaurant, followed by lunch around the new Ow. pool. Ow. And 4 p.m.t. in the lower lobby. And all that is in addition Ow. to our three Ow. regularly scheduled meals. So don't forget... Oh, I hope he makes another announcement eat. quick, so I can get out of here. And that's the last announcement Ow. for this evening. Ow. Good night and pleasant dreams. Oh...
attention, please. Megan, report to the scuba tank immediately. Jamie Lee, I'm back again. Oh, bonjour, Larry. Uh, bone, yeah. Uh, anything come up while I was gone? <laughs> Nothing, unfortunately. Hey, Jamie Lee, I just dropped in from the Midnight Fabric Store. Get out of here. That's fat, yo. Now, quickly, take off your clothes. Hey, this is working out better than I planned. Well, okay, but you will respect me in the morning, won't you? <laughs> Move your ass, yo. I got no time for chatting. I need that leisure suit for a pattern. Oh, I thought, <clears throat> well... Oh, and give me that underwear, too. What? Why? No time to explain. Oh, no. Here we go again. <sighs> Here's my room. This time I made it. Well, shiver me timbers. <laughs> oh, no. Well, it looks like somebody's already shivered that poor little timber. <laughs> that little fucking son of a Well. Just because it's all you can eat doesn't mean you're obligated to make yourself sick. Uh, why not? I don't think anyone will even notice that wee little laddie. You know, Larry, they only put 239 beans in that bowl of dip. Oh, really? Why? Because any more, and it would be too farty. Hmm, oh, that sounds like a Mark Siebert joke. Drinks, anyone? Maltese. Shaking. Not stirred. Yeah, could I get a little bean dip over here? Thanks, baby. You're great. Clean your hull of barnacles. Only use your scorecard. So, Jacques, what's your name? Uh, Jacques. <laughs> American asshole. 
Your attention, please. Walter Ford. Here's my five man trophy sparkle. Charge a hundred smackers of chips to my room, will you, Bob? I feel lucky. Uh, but of course, sir. Put it all on comp. <laughs> With a name like that, how can I lose? Yes, sir, right away. Here, you're nice. American asshole. Come on, little doggies. Ruff, ruff. Don't let me down. Yippee! <laughs> let it ride, fella. I'm rolling now. Yes! Let him build. Wow! Look at those stacks! Oh my god! Look at those stacks! Hello, handsome. I'm Doomy Moore. Who, uh, me? Oh, <laughs> I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. I couldn't help but notice how lucky you are tonight. Well, uh, tonight, yeah. Finally, I'm getting lucky! Would you like to go to my cabin for a more intimate dice game? Hubba, hubba, hope I have a rubber. Sure, what is it? Strip Liar's Dice. You do know how to play Strip Liar's Dice, don't you, Larry? Sure. No, but I'm willing to learn. Where's your cabin? It's 510. I'll go get the dice in the cups. You mean, I gotta wear a cup? Hurry, Larry. I just can't wait to up your ante. Oh. How about a drink, Larry? You know, I'm not really that thirsty right now. Okay. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable, Larry. Great. Mind if I kick off my shoesy woozies? Um, sure. Do you know how to play Strip Liar's Dice, Larry? No, but uh, I'm sure I'll pick it up. <laughs> Let's go. We'll play with what we've got on right now, okay? Sure. All right. Let's roll. Come on, baby. It's your bet. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare you. Show him. And once again, I am victorious. I'll buy a die. Come on, baby needs a new pair of shoes. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I don't know. I heard it once in a movie, I think. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare you. Before you challenge me, you may want to feast your eyes on these. Whoa. The dice, Larry. I mean, feast your eyes on the dice. Let's see what you got. I'm on a roll. I'll buy a die. And over to you. Mm, the bet is high, but I think these will give you something to think about. I'm go. Let's see it. And once again, I'll buy it.
Let's get a move. I think the truth is closer to this. The dice are calling. They say higher, higher. Let's see him. I guess I've got the touch. I'll buy a die. Take it like you mean it. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare you. The dice are falling. They say higher, higher. I'm betting just. Oh, and it just keeps going higher. Pressure getting to you. Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. Let's see him. I guess I got the touch. I'll buy a die. <laughs> Here's my bet. Any? I think you're bluffing, sister. Son of a! I'll buy a die. And over to you. The dice are calling. They say higher, higher. I'm betting just a wee bit higher. Mm, the bet is high, but I think these will give you something to think about. Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. Let's see him. <laughs> I think the dice speak for themselves. How about it? Rattle them bones. And over to you. Show him. Oh. I'll buy it. It's your bet. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare you. The dice are calling. They say higher, higher. Let's see what you got. Son of a! I'll buy a die. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare you. Oh, I just can't help myself. Uh, your move? Not a chance. I'm on a roll. I think I'll start with my shoe. Hey, I kicked off my shoes before we started. Didn't we agree we'd play with what we had on? Yeah, I suppose so. I'll buy a die. Hmm, the bet is high, but I think these will give you something to think about. Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. Let's see him. <laughs> I'll buy it. Okay, chew on this. And over to you. Oh, and it just keeps going higher. Pressure getting to you, Larry. Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. Let's see him. Ooh, touch me. I'm on fire. I suppose I'll sell off my blouse. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Hubba hubba. Woo! Larry, control yourself. I'll buy a die.
and over to you. Oh, and it just keeps going higher. Pressure getting to you, Larry. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare ya. <laughs> here's my bet. And here's a few visual aids. Betting just a wee bit higher. Show them. Larry, you couldn't bluff your way out of a cardboard box. Boy, I'll... I'll buy a dice. Die. Pardon me. I didn't know you were that competitive. Maybe I should come back later when you calm down. Larry. <laughs> Rattle them bones. And away we go. And over to you. <laughs> here's my bet. And here's a few visual aids. Yeah, and I'm the Queen of England. Let's see him. Yeah, I guess you're not the bluffer you think you are, sweet cakes. Hmm, looks like this skirt will have to go. Never again will I doubt the power of prayer. I'll buy a die. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare ya. The dice are falling. They say higher, higher. I think you're bluffing, sister. Oh, shucks, Larry. I'm losing my shirt playing this game. Literally. It's a tough world. You want to play or you want a jaw? I'll buy a die. I'm betting just a wee bit higher. Oh. And it just keeps going higher. Pressure getting to... What do you think? I just fell off a turnip truck? Show them, babe. Ooh, yeah. I'll buy a die. And over to you. Mm, the bet is high, but I think these will give you something to think about. I'm going for the gusto. Show him. I win. And away we go. And over to you. <laughs> here's my bet. And here's a few visual aids. I'm bet. Show them. I don't. Oh, so it's. I'll buy. Rattle them bones. I think the truth is closer to this. Oh, and it just keeps going higher. Pressure getting to you, Larry. Let's see him. Ooh, touch me. I'm on fire. Darn, 
I need to lose another piece of clothing. Oh, pinch me. I'm dreaming. <laughs> Silly me. I forgot about my earrings. What? It's clothing. I'm wearing it, aren't I? Yeah, but I don't wear earrings. Are you saying that you're not man enough to allow a poor, frail little woman a little handicap? Oh, I guess not. <laughs> you're a prince, Larry. That's not what I would call it. I'll buy a die. Okay, there's my bet. Challenge it. I dare you. <laughs> here's my bet. And here's a few visual aids. I'm betting just a wee bit higher. Show him. I thought I had you. And here goes the other earring. <laughs> Getting excited, Larry. Ecstatic. I'll buy a die. Rattle them bones. Oh. And it just keeps going higher. Pressure getting to you, Larry. Let's see him. I guess I got the touch. I'll buy a die. Come on, baby. The dice are calling. They say higher, higher. Let's see him. Son of a... Well, I guess it's the bra or the panties. I just don't know. I've never gone this far before. I'm so embarrassed. I'll flip a coin. Heads, panties, tails, bra. Uh, shouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> Whatever you say, Larry. <gasps> tails! Panties it is. Oh, my cup runneth over. Oh! Here you are, Larry. You earned them. Perhaps I could uh, freshen your drink? Oh, no thanks. I'll just suck on the ice cubes. Oh! I'll buy a die. Come on, baby! The dice are calling. They say higher, higher. Um. <laughs> here's my bet. And here's a few visual aids. Um. Let's see. It's just. I think mm, the bed is high, but I think these will give you I when you've got it, <laughs> you've got it. And over to you. Show them. Son of a... Rattle them bones! The dice are calling. They say higher, higher. And over to you. I don't think so. I don't believe it. I think the truth is closer to this. Oh, 
and it just keeps going higher. Pressure getting to you, Larry. You need to increase the... I'm back. Two. I'm surprised. I'll buy some. Okay, chew on this. Um, the dice are calling. They say higher. Let's see what you got. I'll get you next time. And over to you. The dice are calling. What do you think, I just fell off a turnip truck? Show them, babe. Say la vie. Shake it like you mean it. And over to you. The dice are calling. They say... Not a chance. I don't believe it. Well... <laughs> Something. I'll buy... Not a chance. I'm on a roll. Well, that does it, Larry. You're just too damn good for me. <laughs> I guess this is the moment you've been waiting for. Make yourself comfortable, Larry. Yeah. How about a drink, Larry? You know, I'm not really that thirsty right now. Oh, come on, humor me. Besides, won't we have more fun if we're both a little loose? I guess you're right. Sure. This ought to fix him. Here you are, Larry. Once again, Larry, you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Just a little farther. This time I'm gonna make it for sure. Oh! Oh! Ooh! Your attention, please. Larry Lapper has just won the crap shooting portion of the competition with a record high score. Congratulations, Larry. Don't spend it all in one place. Larry, meet me backstage. Jamie. All right, finally. Lefties unlocked. Here I come, baby. Jamie. Jamie Lee. Huh? No one's seen me yet. So far, 
so good. Next on Inside Affair, the Lust Boat, coming in a port near you. Your attention, please. Don and Mark have just won the synchronized skinny dipping portion of the competition. Let's just see what this guy's got. Mmm, what a place to hide a card reader. Your score is 100. Whoa, 100. A perfect score. Cool. You honk. Ah, the irony. You haven't changed a whit, yet you now precisely match the latest fashion trend. But give those designers a few months. Soon enough, you'll once again be unhip. Your attention, please. Larry Laffer has just won the best dressed bad portion of the competition with a record high perfect score of 100 points. Congratulations, Larry. The world of fashion will never be the same. Miss Peggy, I'm back. Well, look at you, Mr. High f in Fashion. So, um, where can I find a cabin boy, Peggy? You stupid son of a! Don't you know you can never find a god cabin boy when you need him? Sh I go looking for one near every night, right before bed, and do I find one? Hell no. Well, um. My needs are a bit simpler, um, I just want a favor. Well, there is one sneaky-ass little foreign motherfucker always hiding out down there in the employee's break room. Name of x squats or something like that, I don't know. Uh, why don't you try looking there? Thanks, Peggy. Good recommendation. I will. Peggy, I I've been in that employee's break room and, um, I didn't see a soul. It was completely deserted, as if no one works on this ship. <laughs> Shit. Nobody does but me! I have to do everything around here! Peggy, swab the decks! Peggy, weld the railing! Peggy, hose off the captain's rubber sheets! Shit. Ain't nobody works like I do! Um, very impressive. <clears throat> and colorful. But, um, where's Exquisite, um, he he if he's not in that break room? Oh, the sneaky little bird's probably hiding behind the locker bay. Did you look in there? I can't get Susie Q's locker open. Do you know the combination? For sure, kid. Why didn't you ask me sooner? 38, 24, 36. Seems so obvious. Enter my private chambers! Ah, you here for the day, Huh? Oh, and, uh, excuse me, I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you make me laugh, you big zero. Big zero? Uh, yeah, uh, 
if I had a number. Listen, I, I, I can't quite read your name tag. Is that, um, Axel Watsikits? Maybe. Maybe not. You here for dirty pictures? Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, at least I don't think so. Okay, whatever. You're the boss. Hunky donkey door was. That large air vent must help Ziggenfuss keep his cool. Um, do you know where I could obtain some, well, photographs? You know, the, uh, <clears throat> good kind. Wink, wink. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Leafblower wants to buy some filthy pictures, huh? Oh, no, I, I have no interest in pornography. I'm an artist. Oh, yes, artist, me too. And these are very special. Oh, uh, how's that? Why, they're pictures of you. Wow, what? Are you a cabin boy on the ship, or aren't you? Yes. No. Perhaps. Hmm, not clear. Hmm. It seems as if you might be unsure. Well, since I saw movie Cabin Boy, I branch out into new work. <laughs> so, experts, how about cleaning my cabin? It's a mess. I could do that, um... Forget it. What? Aren't you a cabin boy? Actually, from now on you will please refer to me as Individual Accoutrement Maintenance Young Person. Or I am Yip, for sure. See, boss? No more manual labor. Why? <laughs> Why? Who gonna fire a guy with filthy pictures? Hmm? You don't mean... Blackmail? No, 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 no! Wash out your mouth! Everyone buy for personal portfolio! Keepsake, memorabilia, good stuff. Use good film, good camera, good angles. Hasselblad, medium format, 90 millimeter lens. Blows up, real nice. Good for over sofa, even better for over camera. I could obtain some, well, photographs. You know, the, uh, <clears throat> good kind. Wink, wink. <laughs> ah, Mr. Leafblower wants to buy some filthy pictures, huh? Oh, no, I, I have no interest in pornography. I'm an artist. Oh, yes, artist, me too. And these are very special. Oh, uh, how's that? Why, they are pictures of you. What? Say, how did you get photographs of me like this? Oh, it's no problem, really. Fast film, very fast. Well, I suppose I should buy some pictures from you. <laughs> Can you um, charge it to my room? Okay, the dokey, whatever you are saying. It's cute. Do you know Miss Peggy, that deckhand? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Peggy, sure. No, Peggy, very well. No, her since she was just Peggy. Good customer, very good. Go through plenty of dirty pics. Ask her, go ahead, ask. She say I won straight guy. So, uh, Susie Q, do you take care of Drew Barrymore's cabin? Yes. No. Maybe. Not help you, anyway. How about some fine silver, huh? Very heavy plate. Thanks, but um, I'm trying to find her clothes. I don't think you know where her suitcase is. Oh, oh, I know. Believe me, I know. But too busy to help you. Bye, Joey.
Yeah. Bye bye, Exy. Hasta la vista, Potsala. Hi, Miss Peggy. I'm back. Well, look at you, Mr. High f in Fashion. So, um, Miss Peggy, uh, would you tell me about Zekowitz EQ? Cheap f***ing foreign dogs. All his kind wants to do is take jobs away from us real Americans. Miss Peggy, when was the last time you even saw America? 1973. And what's it to you, you little d***head? Ever regret asking a question? The chef has got one sneaky f***ing hobby. Which locker is Kizowitz in? Who am I? Ran f***ing McNally? Find your own way, Columbus. But you can bet it opens from the bottom, because he's such a tiny little f***. I know I'll regret this, but, um, could you be a little more specific? Sh Did your mother have any children that lived? Second locker, bottom row. Now beat it! And I don't mean your little weed whacker either. What's Executed's uh, hobby? I that Exlax is one perverse little motherfucker, always sneaking around the fucking ship's secret passageways, spying on the fucking paying customers. That little bird. Is that legal? You mean is he legal? Hell no! <laughs> Oh, but that don't stop a little from doing it, does it now? I'd like to know what he does with all the filmy shoots. A blackmail would be my guess. Or maybe the alt dot pervert news group. Is there anything Kuzowitzik needs? I mean, something I could give him to gain his favor? Uh, I don't know if he needs anything, but I know what he wants. And it sure ain't a whiff of my crabby p is there anything Stooby Quetzy Watts wants? Simple minded little piece of shit. Can't you figure anything out? He wants to get into the US of A, alright? But he ain't got no fucking chance, schmuck, because he ain't got no fucking passport. Passport, huh? Well, that shouldn't be so hard to find on a cruise ship. You are one dumb son of a b, ain't ya? Don't you remember what happened to all the passports when you came aboard? Oh, no. Probably you were too busy sniffing them fine young officers, wasn't you? I'll see you around, Miss Peggy. It's been my f***ing pleasure, you p***. <laughs> Your attention, please. Ben has just beaten off all covers in the self-stimulation simulation. I'm a little worried about the could you check my balance for me? Of course. Wait here, I'll be right back. Good idea. That will tell you the last number the purser dialed. Hell? Wow. You must be calling my internet provider. That's 1134, Larry. You're reading it upside down. Oh. Horseshoes may not be removed from the horseshoe competition area. Your account is next to nothing. Only $19,123. May I use your telephone? No. This telephone is for official purser's desk business only. You must use the telephone on that pole over there. Where can I find a cabin boy? I don't know where the cabin boys go. Maybe one of the other employees knows. So stop bugging me with your personal problems. I'm only here to serve our passengers. But I am a passenger. See, there you go again. I'd like to talk to you about one of your employees. Yes, sir. I have nothing to do of importance. Why don't you just waste my time berating the innocent elf? You see, it's that Peggy woman, that deckhand upstairs. Oh, oh, her. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I'll talk to her. We've had quite a few complaints. I was only wondering if she was, um, really a pirate? Never you mind, sir. I'll give her a severe tongue lashing right away. Now, that's an ugly picture. 
this may not like be to complain room about my room. Area. <laughs> you and everyone else. You're lucky you have a room. It's weirdos like you that spoil everything for the rest of us normal folks. Hey, back off, bucko. Yes, that is my favorite position, and while you think you're big stuff now, you just wait until we're in charge. Then you'll be singing a different tune. Then you'll be glad to even have a room. What in the hell is wrong with you? Oh, I think you know well enough. The CIA put mind control drugs in Pew's house paint, and now all the interior decorators are under their control. I can't stand it! I'd like my passport, please. I'm Larry. Larry Laffer? Impossible. <laughs> Absolutely impossible. Nope, not allowed. What do you mean, not allowed? Why not? It's my passport. I should be able to get my passport at any time. Ooh, Mr. Big Tough Guy. Don't beat me, please. Well, I think it's not. You can go ahead and beat me. Okay, I don't care. You can have it back. Just show me your identification. My passport is my identification. I must see some form of photographic identification or no passport day. Those are my rules. You're making this up as you go along, right? Sorry. No photo ID, no passport. Let me see if I understand this. To get back my photo ID, I have to show you my photo ID. Don't bother me with details. I'm looking for that cabin boy, ex uh, or whatever his name is. Oh, sure, I'll leave him a note. He'll get to it. Never. Is there anywhere aboard ship where I could get a photo ID made? Right. Like, I'm gonna help you steal poor Mr. Laffer's passport. Uh-huh. But I am Mr. Laffer. That's yet to be proven, hunky. Oh. Okay. And just what do you mean by that? Your attention, please. Don has just captured the piousness portion of the contest. Good job. Now the photos of you are not only dirty, they're sticky. Good idea. Yeah, but first I'm going to tear off some of this groinal area. Earth's desk. Is this really important? This is Agent Fritzland with the SBI. Are you in charge? Of course I'm in charge. What the hell is the SBI? Shipboard Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> We're looking for the passport of one... Laffer? Larry Laffer? <laughs> now, listen carefully. Are you listening? What? Damn it, man, pay attention. Laffer. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Retrieve his passport from the ship's safe. Place it in a plain brown manila envelope. Seal it carefully. Place a small pencil mark across the seal and leave it on the corner of your desk. Then leave your station and wait out of sight. One of my men will walk by in exactly 11 minutes. Synchronize watches on my mark. Five. Four. Oh, just right. I know who you are, okay? And I never, ever give up. Three, two, nothing, do you understand? You people lurk everywhere. Two, one, zero. Bowling balls may not be removed from the bowling competition area. Perther's desk. Now what? Is there anywhere aboard ship where I can have a photo ID made? Nice try, sweetie. Arthur's desk. Oh, could you page someone for me? Uh, all right. The party? Miss Hug and Kiss? We have no one aboard by that name. First name, Amanda? Arthur's death, where we have absolutely nothing to do, and we do it religiously. <laughs> Hello? 
Yes, um, do you have Prince Albert in a can? No, we don't. Well, let him out! <laughs> Perther's desk. It's your quarter. Could you page someone for me? If I must. The name? Mr. Mawini. I'm sorry, we have no one aboard by that name. First name of Adolf? Huh. Ruined a good joke. Perther's desk. Yes, hello. Could you page someone for me? If I must. The party? Mr. Butts. Nice try, sweetie. His first name is Seymour. Oh. Perther's desk. Is your refrigerator running? No, the ship cools everything with iceberg chips. Well, why don't you... Perther's death. Yeah, hi there. Um, is there a bowling alley aboard the ship? Of course there is. This is the luxury liner. Oh. Do you have luxurious ten-pound balls? Of course, and I also have an upright pin. Yeah, well, how can you walk straight? Bowling balls may not be removed from the bowling competition area. I, I impossible. What do you mean, not allowed? Ooh, Mr. Th my pet. I don't. I'd like my passport, please. What for? You have no need for it here aboard ship. Look, here's my photo ID. That's what you said you needed, right? Now be a nice little puckered pandering purser and procure my passport. Pronto! Yes, sir. Ditch. Here you are. Do not lose it. There are many nefarious types roaming this ship. <laughs> All of them mooching ill-gotten booty, such as this, from our unsuspecting guileless guests. I doubt that. You're just paranoid. Oh, muchisimos gracias, senor. We ranking officers can never get enough insults from lowly passenger scum. Deposit one dollar and seventy five cents for each additional minute. Your attention, please. Paging Therese. Therese to the break room. Emergency Coma Run. Hey there, yo Ah, uh, same right at you, Mr. Loaf in the Pants. So, um, do you enjoy traveling, Zippy Wits? Enjoy? Yes, very much. Love to travel. But someday want to settle down. Oh, really? Where? Well, U.S. of A. Where else? Love Fresno suburbs. Mm -hmm. Want big Volvo, crabgrass, satellite dish. Miss Peggy tells me you have an interest in travel. Ah, yes, she speaks true. Need to see passports so can make copy. Any country, U.S. Very, very good. Where are yours? Oh, it's around. I know how much you want to travel, Zibbity Doo Dah. I'm a kind of a world traveler myself. In fact, I have my passport with me right now. What? You have passport? <gasps> Never see American passport. Show me passport with me see. Thanks. Bye. 
<laughs> Damn! Where'd he go? Good idea. You may as well get something in trade for your passport. Challenged having a good time. <laughs> Idiot, fool, miniaturist. Oh, oh. <laughs> this time I've got to make it without running into somebody. I can't be that unlucky. Oh, wouldn't I love a bite of that? Cybersmith So nice you could drop by. And dressed for the occasion. Whoa! Who's this? <clears throat> Gotta play it cool. Um, uh, yes, I uh, always like to be, uh, well, uh, dressed in, in, in things. Rats. What a sad. I've got a problem, Larry. The old man. Oh, that old guy in the wheelchair? Hmm, she must be his nurse. Yes, exactly. I'm tired, Larry. I got into this for a reason. To become a rich widow. But I'm so tired of waiting. You get me? She loves nursing, but she doesn't have enough time for sex. Oh, I got you. I thought it would be easy. He looks like he's ready to keel over any second. But he saves up his strength till we're back in the cabin. And then he wears me out. I've had my fill of boning that old coat. The constant pressure. The endless pounding. Oh, a physical therapist, too. I wonder if it's true what they say about physical therapists. I see your problem and... And... I'm your solution. This is easier than I thought. So you're willing... To do the dirty deed? This is easier than I thought. Hey, sweetheart. I'm always willing to help a dame in need. What a putz. Yes. Help. I'll make it worth your while. How about a little sample? Right now. Sample? More like a taste of things to come. <laughs> oh! Come by my cabin late tonight, and we'll work out the kinks. I'll lay out my plan. He'll do the killing. I'll get off scot-free. Sounds great! When can you fit me in? Uh... Wait! What cabin? What's your name? Your attention, please. Jen has just won the Strip Shuffleboard Tournament. Cybersmith 2000. No, not Fifi. These fish must not be very good. Why? They're working with a net. 
Apparently, these fish were on the wrong side in the seafood revolution. Pass the salt. That's not funny. Okay, you try making the jokes all the time. That fish has gone bad. How can you tell? Oh, the little things. The earring, the tattoo, the surly expression. Say, how about if I toss the fish and keep the magazine it's wrapped in? That's good. This page contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese. The ingredients include beaver milk, as always, milk from the elusive Venezuelan beaver is much preferred, a pinch of salt, rennet, for which lime juice may be substituted in a pinch, and a hint of mold. Now for the details of preparation. Hey, you made a subiism. What? A subiism. You know, when you choose a word based on previous words, Okay, like you use the cliché, in a pinch, because you just finished saying the phrase, pinch of salt. Get it? Damn, you're weird, Larry. Anyhow, there's more on the back of the page. Oh, you mean I have to click again just to hear the back? Oh, stop your whining. Here, the back contains the recipe for Venezuelan beaver cheese and kumquat quiche. The ingredients include beaver cheese and a sliced kumquat. You probably don't want to hear the rest of this either, do you? Barkeep, what do you got? My name's Johnson, and anything you want, we got. What do you want? Oh, uh, Johnson, I want a gigantic erection. Well, talk to the captain, not me. No, I mean a drink. A cocktail. Oh, well, that'll take a while. Are you sure? Oh, I'll, I'll wait. No problem. You cook. What a surprise. Huh. Sneaky idea. The jugs will never notice. The two cans look almost identical. Your attention, please. Beijing Mr. Hunt. Mr. Mike. Ah, oh, you guys, I like a fall for that. Hey, loser. You want this drink you ordered? I'll charge it to your room. Thanks. Hey, my banana's all soft and flaccid with little brown spots. Sorry, bud. I only do drinks. In this... That's a sneaky idea. The bulb fits. It's the right voltage. But won't it make the stage uncomfortably warm? Uh, hi, 
Hiya, girls. My name's Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Laffer? Well, that's a funny little old name. I'll bet you're a funny little old fella, too. Well, gee, I guess so. <laughs> Say, don't I know you? Oh, probably. Yeah, you're famous, aren't you? We're the Jugs. My name's Naomi. And this here's my daughter. Why don't you? So, you ever heard our records, Larry? So, why are a couple of famous singers like you taking a cruise? Well, to be honest, Larry, fame can be a curse as well as a blessing. All that touring was just a wearing us out. Not to mention the fact that we can't show our faces in public again until the hate's all. Why don't you hush your mouth? Larry, ain't you the little flatterer? I'm why don't you's mama, don't you know? Of course, we are dang near the same age. I had her on my first ovulation. Heck yeah, I'm 19, and mama's been 29 for at least five years. Why don't you? You are not funny. I notice you both have really large, um, hairstyles. <laughs> yeah, you like them? Well, they're sure, uh, big. How do you get them that way? Now there, that's a little old showbiz secret. To get it really big, I like to hang upside down. Why don't you stop? And to keep the hairspray from sticking to your outfit, you just about gotta be butt naked. That's about enough, why don't you? That's actually too much, but uh, thanks for sharing. Anytime. So, um, what kind of music do you sing? Both kinds. Country and Western. Ass kicking country western. Why don't ya? We don't use that kind of language no more. Sorry, Mama. But kicking. Now, see, was that so hard? You probably know our big hit. Big hair and tangled limbs. Uh, well, it, it doesn't ring a bell. What about I got my panties round my ankles and pain round my heart? Know that one, don't you? Well, it sure sounds like a Grammy winner. Oh, honey, it is. It is. When we finish that, there ain't a dry eye in the house. So just what kind of music do you listen to, anyway? Disco, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. You know, some folks say it's coming back. Oh, I don't. But, see, I say it never left. You are a funny little fella. Hi, my name's Bill Gates. Ah, couldn't be. You're too geeky. Slam Dunk School. two must be performing here on the cruise. We weren't gonna at first. See, we're on vacation, don't you know? Yeah, we was just wanting a break from the pressures of fame. But our manager insists we keep our acts tight. So we decided to do one special show for the fans, don't you know? God love them. What do you mean, till the heat's off? Oh, there was an unpleasant little inside end about a month ago. We was doing a benefit at a maximum security women's correctional facility. We was trying to give our poor sisters a change to forget their troubles. It's always for the fans. Don't you know that? And our manager said it'd be a cheap way to shoot our new cable special, Caged Heat, Jugs Behind Bars. Why don't you? Who's telling the story anyway? Anyway, turns out that day we had a little trouble of fitting into our spandex costumes. See, Mama had been hitting them tour bus donuts again. Why don't you shush? Anyhow, you know, the show must go on. So I just had one of our roadies spray us down with some silicone lubricant. And we just slid right in. Hmm. Well, now, there's an interesting image. Anyhow, we had no idea those hot stage lights would trigger a chemical reaction between the spandex and that silicone lubricant. Hoo-hoo-wee! That was something. 
it did cause a commotion. Oh, yeah. So, what happened? It's all kind of just a blur now. Let's just say after that, it were where we went we was accosted by tabloid photographers. <laughs> we was mobbed. And once they aired that videotape on a Nashville affair, well, we just had to lay low for a while. So, here we are, just a soaking up some rays and a kicking back. Do you have any recordings I could listen to? You know, I'd love to give you an autographed copy of our latest CD. This jug's for you. But we left for this cruise in such a hurry, we only had time to grab a few lacy nothings off in the books. Oh, that's okay. I far prefer the superior fidelity of A-Track. Say, hey, you are a funny little feller. So why do you wear spandex outfits if it caused you so much grief? For the fans, don't you? Yep, it's always for the fans. And because it's my corseting action keeps Mama out of them full fragrant sizes. Why don't you? That'll be enough. Well, it's been... Be sure you catch our show in the lounge tonight. Y'all come back now, here. The first time that I saw his face is when I realized he's got his daddy's eyes and his other daddy's smile. Lance. Thank you so much. And now, we need a volunteer for the unplug part of our set. Who wants to play with our jugs? Wow. <laughs> Why, looky here, Mama. A volunteer. Howdy, buckaroo. Pardon us while we whip these out. <gasps> <sighs> oh. Hey, Johnson. How about some of that special lighting? Why don't you, honey? Is it hot in here? Oh, Mama, I'm a getting that feeling again. Grab it. run into somebody this time. Your attention, please. Don has just won the high-speed portion of the contest. You never... You love the feel of a good beaver, don't you, Larry? What are you going to do with those? There's a remote possibility you could use that. Well, what's this? The sound man left his earplugs lying under the mixer.
There is a you. Watch out! Congratulations! Another ringer! Your attention, please! Larry Lapper has just won the horseshoe tossing portion hey, of the competition with a record high perfect score of 100 points. Congratulations, Larry! You really stuck it to him! This life insurance policy in the amount of one billion dollars is on one Aristotle K. Boning with the beneficiary listed as Annette B. Boning. It emits a very faint smell. interested in boning? I'm your boy! No, 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 no. I, I mean, I want to find out about a passenger named Boning. Damn. I never give out information to the public. Even boning one. Bowling balls may not be removed from okay, the bowling just... company. Arthur's death, what do you want? Yes, may I please have the boning cabin? Connecting. Hello? Are you boning? We were, till this damn phone rang. I'm a little worried about the charges on my account. Could you check my balance for me? Of course. Wait here, I'll be right back.
Dice may not be removed from the crops table area. Good idea. Go oil? Yeah, that's real helpful. What in the hell good does that do me? Larry, the phone's upside down. And your point is? That's 71009. The boning's phone number is 71009. I knew that. The 7 indicates a guest room on this ship. 1009 is their room number. Huh. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that could be helpful. Your attention, please. Bob has just won the new pole vaulting portion of the competition. It smells faintly of gardenias with hints of rose water and intrigue. Okay, baby. This is it. What are you doing? You weren't supposed to kill him yet. I... Uh, I thought you were... Safely asleep next door? Yes. It's all becoming clear to me now. A heart attack. No evidence. Very neat. But now I'm the patsy. Jeez. The old guy's one sound sleeper. Hey, maybe we should go to your room and let this old geezer rest in peace, huh? Oh, I think this is exactly where you want to be. Oh, no! She thinks I'm a homosexual! No, no, it's not like that at all. Drop the dumb act, pal. You had this planned all along. But when does the other shoe drop? What's his game? Annette, you don't think I'm a homosexual? Oh, yeah, I do think, you cold-hearted bastard. I guess we'll do it your way. Let's get this stuff out of here. Hey! My clothes! Does he want evidence lying around? I think you'd better leave now, before you help me even more. Ah, uh, hell, I don't even care anymore. Let him come. Take a look. Take a gander. See what you want. Oh, two for a nickel. Mommy, why is that funny man wearing a diaper? Yes? Oh, it's you. Uh oh. It's good to see you again. Um, well, I was just kind of wondering if there's any way I could get you in bed. If we could, um, talk. I'm not sure what we have to talk about. So, uh, baby, what's your sign? Octagonal. Huh? As in, stop. You know, um, about the other night, um, well, I just wanted to, um, convince you I'm not gay, <laughs> personally. Look, you did what you had to do, but I don't want to talk about it, okay? But I, well, uh, all right. I have
haven't seen your old friend around lately. Is everything okay? Yes. Everything's fine. Here it comes. I hope he's having a nice rest. Gosh, does she have a great body or what? Oh, he's resting comfortably. So it's blackmail. Annette, I have a knife. Oh! Wait! Come back! I wasn't threatening you. I was just wondering what I was supposed to do with this knife. Your attention, please. Al has just finished the flatulence portion of the competition. E-Deck will reopen in 15 minutes. Yes? Stop bugging me. Yeah, I'm still around. Yeah, I'm still horny. I have something I believe you want. Oh, that damn insurance policy. Now it's gonna cost me big time. Why, yes. I believe that is mine. Thank you for returning it. Um, I was thinking, you know, um, well, for something as special as this, don't you think, well, you know, a little extra thanks would be in order? <laughs> like sex? Oh. I don't think I have anything you want. Oh, I think you have plenty of what I want. Think. Think. How am I gonna get rid of this schmuck? I just don't know. What do you say I come inside? Your vault. All right, Larry. I know what you want. And if I give it to you, I don't want to see you again. You understand? No more. That's it. We're through, capiche? She wants me to have sex right now, and she doesn't want me to call her later. Oh, it's a dream come true. You're reading my mind, sweetcakes. Uh, okay. Wait right here. Man, a guy's gotta jump through hoops just to get this chick in bed. Okay, Larry. I don't keep much cash around. But this is worth a lot more than you deserve. Now, Amscray, skedaddle. Huh? What's this? Half a billion dollars worth of stock? Oh, but I wanted to get laid. Cybershield 2000. It is unlocked. But what would you do inside a hopper full of bowling pins? Good idea. You slyly open the hopper door and spray the entire can of deodorant all over the bowling pins. things are to happen. <laughs> this has got to do it. Attention, please! 
please. Larry Lapper has just won the bowling portion of the competition with a record high perfect score of 300 points. Congratulations, Larry. You really blew the place apart. scan a little of this first to see if it's something I want to read in depth. Anton Hermann Gerard Falker was born in 1890 in Java. At an early age, he began an airplane manufacturing business in Germany. During World War I, his factories produced triplanes and biplanes. He revolutionized aerial warfare in 1915 by mounting a machine gun on the front of an airplane, then synchronized the gun so it would fire through the blades of the plane's propeller instead of shooting them off. After the war, he turned to developing commercial aircraft. In 1922, he moved to the United States, where he died in 1939. No woman. Even a totally naked one is worth reading that. Hi, Dick. Whoa, man. I like never realized what a totally bitchin' dresser you were. What do you got that's long and hard, Dick? <laughs> Isn't that like, uh, what is that, uh... Redundant. <laughs> hi, Drew. It's me, Larry. Oh, hi, Larry. So, what's up, other than the obvious? So, you really know a lot about this guy, huh? Oh, yes. Falker, Anton Hermann Gerard, 1890-1939, Dutch-born German-American aircraft designer and aircraft manufacturer, born Java. His factories in Germany produced triplanes and biplanes used in World War I. He revolutionized aerial warfare by synchronizing a front-mounted machine gun to fire through the propeller of a plane without intercepting the blades, 1915. He later turned to developing commercial aircraft and came to the U.S. in 1922. Wow! You really know a lot about those Falkers. I always felt Anton never received the recognition he so sorely deserved. Oh, you are knowledgeable, aren't you, Larry? Yes, Anton was a wonderful inventor, a genius, really, but he wasn't a brilliant businessman. It was his mother who really ran the company, you know. Yes, she was a tyrant who ruled with an iron fist. You mean? Yes, she was one mean motherfucker. Ugh, I think we could all see that one coming. I would really enjoy having a more in-depth discussion with you, Drew. Really? Me too. In fact, I could balk her all night long. Oh, uh, that's pretty much what I was thinking. So, uh, you want to go back to my room to see my aircraft etchings? I'd love to, but I can't. What do you mean, you can't? I can't, because remember, I ordered the cabin boy to lock up my clothing for the duration of the cruise, and you know I just can't violate the ship's rules and walk brazenly, boldly naked through the clothing required parts of the ship like some sort of exhibitionist. That would never do. No, I'll just have to stay here, lying here naked all night, the cool tropical breezes gently wafting over my bare skin. <sighs> I can't believe I've got to get a totally naked woman into her clothing. Your attention, please. All contestants, be sure to complete the social disease pretest on your scorecard. Oh no. How will I ever find Drew's suitcase among all these? It'd be like finding a needle in a haystack. Cybersmith <laughs> 2000. Well, 
Sorry, dude. You gotta stop here. Like, duh. What again? Now what? You. You cannot enter the pool like that. Like what? Like that. You know, carrying a suitcase. Really? And why not? Purser's orders. You might change into your clothes or something. Oh, all right. Can I leave it here? I mean, will you keep an eye on it for me? Dude, do I look like a check room? I mean, no. Uh, all right. Since it's you, go on, leave it. You want your little buddy again? <laughs> well, I guess. I'm getting kind of used to it. <laughs> Just so long as you don't let it grow attached. <laughs> Hello, Drew. Working hard? That's funny, coming from a guy with an elephant codpiece. Drew, I've got your suitcase. Really? I don't see it. Uh, the attendant made me leave it in the changing cabana. Come on. But, Larry, this means I'll have to parade completely across the deck, totally, utterly nude, showing everyone here my tan, fit, naked body. I love <laughs> hey, Larry, get out of the way. Well, here we are, Drew. It's not much, but uh, it is roomy. Okay, Larry, just give me a minute to hop in your shower and rinse off the sunscreen, okay? Steam's not the only thing rising. This ought to get her out of there. Oops. I'm not staying here, and don't you try coming around the pool, either. Great! Hot diggity. That certainly seems to have gone well. Your attention, please. Lane has just won the new blindfolded tattooing competition. If you think you're man enough, go ahead. Was it good for you? And now, the proud little Seaman Lounge presents our version of Disney's Mr. Lincoln. Welcome to Great Moments with Mr. Clinton, starring our little audio animatronic answer to the deterioration of respect for the office of the President of the United States, Willie! Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let me just say this. Thank you. I am your president. <laughs> hey, wait a minute now. I haven't even started the jokes yet. And now, without any further to do, here comes the hilarity. How do you recognize Al Gore when he's surrounded by Secret Service agents? Easy. Johnson, it's me, Larry, <laughs> Larry Laffer. 
Hey, man! Nice threads! Uh, excuse me, Johnson. I want a glass of lime juice. No. Why not? We don't serve just lime juice. And why not? Cause it ain't on the menu. Oh, it ain't, ain't it? Nope. If it ain't on the menu, I ain't serving it. Well then, how about you make me a lime ricky, Johnson? Is that on your menu? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One lime ricky. Coming up. But leave out the gin, okay? Okay. Virgin. And leave out the soda water, okay? Okay. And leave out the sugar, okay? Okay. And leave out the friggin' ice, okay? Why, you? And make it snappy. Here, buck her up. Let's see, some beaver milk, this mold scraped from my shower wall, a pinch of salt, and this lime juice. And voila, Venezuelan beaver cheese. P.U. That stuff stinks. Cybersmith 2000. You set the cute little kitchen timer for exactly 55 minutes. Mix the kumquat into your pot of beaver cheese, throw in a few more things you find lying under the kitchen counter, then place the entire mess in a clean baking dish and slam it in the oven. Well, okay. A baking dish. Hey, that doesn't smell half bad. No, it smells all bad. Your attention, please. With the winner of last week's Artistic Pleasing license. the Captain competition, please report to the infirmary at this time. Your test results are in. You present your concoction for evaluation by the panel of esteemed chefs. Scorecard, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. Martha. Well, let's see now. from the hundreds of other Venezuelan beaver cheese quiches we've endured. Although the essence of kumquat does help slightly. <laughs> what? I don't even want to bother tasting it then. Wait, I might want to try it. No, never mind. I just ought to spice it up a little. Proudly, you present your special enhanced concoction for evaluation by the panel of esteemed chefs. Um, scorecard, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Lofa. Well, what do we have here? Mm. I'll well, have what yes. she's got. Well, delightful. Hey, wait for me. Whoa. 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 Whoa.
You know what they like. Look at those scores. You just won the cook-off competition. Your attention, please. Larry Lapper has just won the cook-off with a record high score of 300 points. Congratulations, Larry. Everyone wants a copy of... Okay, Captain. Prepare to meet your new master. Man, what happened to you? I'm last week's winner. Or what's left of me. Don't go in there. Are you sure you want to continue, Larry? I made it this far. I'm not quitting now. been some terrible error. I was told the winner of my competition was one Larry Laffer. Oh, that's me already. I am so excited about winning the free cruise and spending a week with a beautiful babe like you. Why, there must be some mistake. No, that was never part of the offer. I, I thought, you know, your cabin, a week of... An me and... oh. But I won the contest, fair and... <clears throat> well, I won the contests. Yes, I know. Well, the cruise part is no problem. I'm sure your room is available next week. But... And I know that the winner is supposed to spend a week with me, but... I'm filled with ennui. What do you mean, ennui? Ennui. Oh... It's difficult to explain. Ennui. Noun. Listlessness and dissatisfaction resulting from lack of interest. Boredom. French. From the old French, ennuyé. To annoy, to bore. From the vulgar Latin. To quote John Barth, the servants relieved their ennui with gambling and gossip about their masters. Who the hell is that? I don't know, but I hear him all the time. But... How can you change the rules now? I thought I'd won the game. After seeing you, Larry Laffer, suddenly I expect something more. And besides, I always say a man should give before he gets. So, what do you really want out of life, Captain? Oh, I don't know. The cruise game just isn't what it used to be. Once, everything was tinsel and glamour. Jet setters and high rollers, playboys and loose sex, you know? And now, Richard Simmons and Kathy Lee. Besides, this was never my idea of a career. I want to return to my previous occupation. Oh. Super tanker captain. Really? Oh, yes. I'd do anything to put some real mass under me again. I just can't understand why I lost that gig on the Boning Valdez, just because we happen to run aground. Oh, like it's my fault Hazleton would rather spend the night in my cabin instead of on that drafty old bridge. Don't you get tired of spending every week with a new man, learning his fancies, his desires, his sensitivities, his erogenous zones, learning to please him? Perhaps I don't understand the question. What exactly are you trying to say? So, uh, what do you say, uh... Little game of drop the anchor? 
You and me, stand to stern, tug and tanker. God, Larry, you're pathetic. How'd you ever get past the Love Master 2000? Cheat? Was that a no? You know, Cappy, I just might be the boy who makes your dreams come true. Oh, this is doubtful. Extremely doubtful. What would you say if I told you I recently came into a significant position in a major shipping line? I'd say we were both dreaming. Well, dream no more, sweet cakes. Let me whip this out. God, how crude. Yep, crude it is. Crude oil shipping! Well, I'll be damned. Does this say what I think it says? That you're... Nothing less than the proud new majority shareholder of Bone Code Transportation. Only the number one crude oil shipper in all the world. This changes everything. Sure does. But operating the world's largest fleet of super tankers is so demanding. The environmental groups, the regulators, the constant turnover when captains strike major continents. Turnover can be a good thing. Well, I am looking for someone to fill a position directly under me. Mm-hmm. Oh, Larry. <laughs> Although I just love opera, how about we listen to some of my music? the greatest! This has got to be the best night of my life! Put on these handcuffs, Lever! Celebrate! Celebrate! Let's celebrate! 